this is the long, the long video with the explanation of how to build the power cube from scratch. The power cube built in this video is based on this CAD drawing here in Blender of a power cube. The green tubes around the outside of the frame and the grey, the big grey block in the middle is the motor, the engine, and all the parts around it are the parts that link the hydraulic fluid in the, the green parts the hydraulic fluid of the frame. The red is the gas tank that you can see in that section there. There's the pump underneath, wire frame. So that grey part of the frame has nothing in it. That red bit is the gas tank and it goes along the top of the back as well. All the rest of the green, the hydraulic fluid as I mentioned before. And the bottom left there, well there's the battery, the bottom left is the where the suction comes out and goes round to the pump underneath, selecting through the key and so on. Yep, there's the gas tank, the red at the back. The engine, the black box on the engine there represents the exhaust, pump underneath. So here are the So here are the parts for the power cube, here's the motor. <coughs> the motor so far has has the throttle attached to it which is uh, here so we can control the speed. Um, this is the gas petrol intake uh, and there's a choke up under here which we May hook a some will hook some sort of wire up to, and here we have where the electrics are going to connect. Put a solenoid somewhere down below there, and before dealing with all that, we're going to put the actual frame of the power cube together. Here are the frame. Here is the frame in parts. All the parts cut up, ready to tack up, weld together. I've balanced some of the parts of the power cube up on each other so we can get a kind of idea of what it's going to start to look like. As we can see, there's holes at the end. Uh, the holes <coughs> going through are uh, being torched out, and you can see the other one in there torched out. Um, so that'll weld together on there. Now I'm going to weld plates, little plates I've cut out here, onto the ends of the cubes. Obviously that'll go a bit higher and cover the cracks and to seal the ends. And now there's three... with holes in. So there's those two with holes big enough to take the fuel and hydraulic fluid inlets, uh, well inlets or where we fill the tanks from. And this one is bigger to take this, I think it's two and a half inch coupler cut in half. Um, basically cut in half to keep one side of the threads. As you can see, there's the other side of the thread, threads. And I'll weld this. <coughs> I'll tack it on like that. And then spin it round. Weld the other side. Weld it flush with the edge. And then once that's welded in, that'll go on to here. Weld that on the end there, which will be the the, or the suction, which will take the filter and the high, the engines and hydraulic pumps will suck the hydraulic fluid out of this frame. Because we've designed, which I didn't mention at the start, we've designed the frame, so part of the frame is going to be filled with hydraulic fluid, and part with 
gasoline, petroleum. Okay, these are for the fuel and the hydraulic fluid and they will fit into here like so. Now, the idea of this is to bolt that down onto there, so I'm going to mark the holes and tap the holes out with a thread tap and then screw this straight into the metal. After the precision machining, let's see if we can see you can see the holes here that are drilled out after marking and now I'm tapping them with this tap set and use the little tools to figure out the size of the thread or the spacing between the threads on the screws um, and then use that and match it to the to the size tap and it turned out to be 1032 this little apparatus is bust so I've clamped it with these clamp grips, mole grips um, now I'm working the threads in we can see the precision machining in better light the holes tapped so the power cube frame is balanced together and I'm going to torch out these holes as I've done here as we go around <coughs> I'm going to torch out a letterbox for the fuel compartment which I'll explain in more detail later but basically the reason for that is so that the fluid can get through all the, all the fluid can get through and it can completely drain empty if the hole was only up to there if the hole was there then there'd be all the fluid below the hole that wouldn't fall down to the outlet that's going to be tapped into here <coughs> here's the little outlet some threads on the end if I can focus some threads on the end and that will drill and tap a hole into the bottom here and that will lead straight into the fuel inlet of the motor which is here by this hose which will cut to the appropriate length yeah, well, the outlet, here's the outlet Weld it on the back side. I'm going to weld, put this big nip in to stop the spat of ruining the threads as I weld the outside. As you can see, I've started this one as well. I'm going to weld the rest of the way around. Then we're going to tap a hole in the bottom of the fuel tank for the fuel hose to attach to that. <coughs> Finished article. Fuel line hole. The tap. finished article ready for the pipe. Now before welding the frame together, welding all the ends on. So this is at the top, this is going to have <coughs> the opening for the gas, petrol, 
and this is just one of the ends. I'm going to weld it together. I'm going to weld all the ends on, grind them down to shape, and then ready to weld the frame together. together
Now the whole thing's tacked up. I'm going to start welding it properly. Frame welded up. <coughs> Started with the QA plate, 10 inch by 7. I think it's 3 eighths plate. You can use 3 eighths or half inch, no problem. Gonna attach this, the motor, to this. Just mark the center there. Torch down a nice circle. There you go. Two bolts to go on either side. That thing beeps a lot. Oh, that thing? The inverter, the new one. Okay, what do we got here? We've got leak testing. This is a finished power cube as far as just the weld. Look at the power cube. We've got holes for the gasoline. Mm -hmm. There's the gasoline barb outlet. Gasoline barb outlet. Here's the hydraulic fluid inlet. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be uh, the dipstick and filler for hydraulic fluid. And the suction line for hydraulics is here. We're going to plug all these up, fill them with some compressed air, and test for leaks by putting bubbly soap water onto all the seams to make sure there is no pinholes in them. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's all taped up and bunged up. Airtight. Uh, wrong one. And we're going to pump air in through the fuel outlet to see if we have any leaks. It's the air compressor hooked up to the fuel This is the one outlet. for the... That's the fuel. Uh, hold on. That's only going to test leaks in the fuel. Yeah. Okay. See that? We have a little leak here. Okay, so mark it. Leak testing over. Well, it's some protective plates either side of the inlets. So I've welded the protection plates on for the fuel and hydraulic caps inlet here. And I've now tacked on the first 2x2 two two quarter inch angle, iron, angle irons. They are 7 inches from the base tube here and that's, that's also 7 inches coming here because these sides are 16 as you can see written on here here are the 19 inch here are the 19 inch 2 by 2 by quarter angles they mount underneath like so and they're going to join together like this and the trick to having them join 
at the right from the right the right distance apart here is to drill the holes in the ends half an inch down from the top so half an inch in half an inch down from the top half an inch down from the top hole here hole here same 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 and then with half inch bolts they'll join together like so okay so here's the motor on its side and we're going to place it in the power cube to measure up <coughs> where to mark holes in this angle iron to bolt it down okay so the motor's temporary in place and now we've got to decide whether it's the good. The fuel line is right in place. Yep. That's pretty good. Got to decide if there's any reason we'd want it two inches to the left, to the right, to the Let's front or the back. Let's get it to the right here since this exhaust might be starting to butt pretty close to the exhaust. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's do that. Okay, I've welded the bolts on the back sides of these two by twos to join them together. The bolts are there. Weld it at the back. You can cut the heads off and weld them in. Um, these are going to sit inside the motor mounts to those holes there, and then the pump is going to mount to the to the bottom bit here. That bottom bit there, the pump will mount underneath there, and the space in between is for the shafts to connect with the coupler. Here's the hydraulic pump and the hydraulic pump QA plate, which is now finished. Drill two holes in it here. Take the bolts that'll hold it to the plate. Ignore that hole there, it was already in the plate. So this will fit on like that. And just going to put the bolts in, the heads from the under, uh, sorry, heads from this side. I'm thinking about leaving the heads on. On other QA plates like the tractor motor QA plates, we've cut the heads off and welded them flat. But for this, it seems that it's not necessary, so we'll see how we go. Might update and change that in a couple of hours. Okay, now I've got this far and the pump's tight to the pump QA plate. I've held it up in place to measure how much of the shaft, the motor shaft, has to be cut off. Let's get this rubber ring back on. So here's the motor shaft and it need, there needs to be half an inch gap between the pump and the motor shaft to make space for the plastic because this coupler is going to go between the two and there's a plastic um, spider this is actually an old one but it's going to work just as well anyway and it's half an inch tall that's half an inch and if we look here the shaft of the motor will go down through there and then it can't go past the spider, else it'll damage it. So we need half an inch gap to allow for the spider between the two, which I've measured up by holding this up and put a little mark, see the little black mark on the shaft. So that's how high this comes up. So we're going to take the motor out and then cut the shaft down to half an inch above that black mark somewhere here and then mount this whole structure together, drop the motor back in and we're nearly ready to stick it on the back of the tractor and pump some hydraulic fluid. Uh oh, here's trouble. Trouble in the workshop. Little pips have found it. Hey cool dudes.
Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. What are you doing around here? Oh, it's a stone. It's not food. I've ju just cut the shaft off the motor uh, so that there's a half an inch gap between the shaft here and the pump shaft. I uh, measured it all out and cut it off with a cutting blade in the grinder. Got the cutting blades up here. Threw a cutting blade on it and cut it to the right length. That's a case of <coughs> putting it all back together again, connecting it up with the coupler. Stick this part here. The to the motor, the other part on the pump, this spider in the middle, which is an old one, it's a bit worn as you can see, but we'll get a new one in a couple of weeks to replace this one, but this will do fine for now. Uh, getting close to completion. Here's the engine in and all the bolts tightened down, and it's upside down at the moment. Tightened all these brackets in, <coughs> and I'm just putting the half the motor coupler on. You can see, tighten it on with the Allen key. That's pretty tight. The key is in there. And that's that half. I'm ready to stick the other half on, line up. Fill the holes in the QA pump QA plate. And there we have it, the pump bolted in place. It's all upside down at the moment, so we can get a good look at how it's bolted on there and there. They're not directly opposite each other because this kind of got in the way. But for the next one, I can design that out. Now that everything's in place, the motor, hydraulic pump, coupler in between, as we can see from this angle. I'm starting to build up the, this is where the hydraulic fluid will be sucked out of by the hydraulic pump. And we're going to have one outlet come up, elbow come round the back I think and into there and this one is going to head down for the second power cube below it. This power cube is going to sit on top of the back of the tractor. Um, here we have the filter. There's one of these welded inside inside the frame. The filter is screwed into that then there's a nipple here to an elbow, elbow to a thrust bearing, thrust bearing, nipple to a T. Then we'll tee off into a quick coupler and for the bond below, and we'll elbow off into another coupler here for this one.
just added the hydraulic fluid filter goes into the inlet there back into the frame continuing building the return line filter section so the return is going to come through this quick coupler the return hydraulic fluid and this is the case drain we have a quarter inch puppet quick coupler which is that bit there and this bit is quarter inch to three quarters brushing to screw in up in here tighten that down and that's the return line ready for the hoses to receive the hoses okay so here on the return side we've got a quick coupler where the hydraulic fluid comes back from the valves this is going to be the case drain it's going to go there with a little quarter inch puppet quick coupler there's the male to go there and this port is going to be oops and this port is going to be the pressure bypass which will come from the that mounted to the pump and a hose will come out of there into here here's the bypass connected to the pump look underneath comes through of the pump quick coupler bypass to male it's going to hook on up here it's going to hook on up here to the return line stiff connection fuel caps are on fuel hydraulic fluid Okay, we come to the closing stage. We've got the quick attach plate hooked on, uh, welded on. The battery's in place. You can see, welded a little tray for the battery out of angle iron. And all we've got left is to hook up the electronics. Cut out a hole in the frame of the ignition key unit to hook up to the all the wires on the starter motor. Here's that unit and focus. Not really. made a little plate to fit just over the top and it holds it in place so it doesn't spin with the ignition when you uh, when you try to turn it on so the plate this fits on like so There we go, and that's going to go up in here. A couple of little tack welds just underneath here to stop it from spinning, and then on the top the threads tighten down, and the solenoid is going to go just below, and the battery is going to go in there. So we'll hook battery wise to the solenoid to the ignition key and all the wires from the motor. So the, the back of this right cylinder here? 
Hold on. We've got some thread in place for the solenoid to go on. Like so. Straight below the key. Here's the power cube built up and ready to take the engine. Uh, there'll be a subsequent video after this one with all the details of how to build this cube and how to put all the electrics on the motor as they're all hooked up, ready to go. What we're going to do now is assemble it as quick as we can to see how quick we can do it. You ready to film this, Scott? Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> That's all. There's other parts to hook up, but that's good enough to test now. Um, so we'll pull some fuel in here and test it out. Uh, that's it. There's obviously there's simple bits to fit on, like the pump. <coughs> but the pump just bolts on underneath with those two brackets. Oops. Back brackets, bolts on, all bolts on. So that's a five minute job. And and that's the uh, return line. And, um, and just add the suction line which is here. So that's a five minute job. So we're ready basically to test. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, oh, yeah. I got it, I think. Nice. No, ready to turn it out. No. No. Looks like we're complete on the power cube. First test run coming up right now. We're going to pour fuel into the fuel tank. Connect that up to pull the pour, pour in the fuel in. And the electronics, the electrics are hooked up, <coughs> as we can see. Mm. We have two wires coming out of here, which we believe is the full fuel cutoff underneath the carburetor. carburetor. Um, we have the earth of the battery hooked down to the frame. Hard to see, but it's basically the other side. There's a bolt like this on the solenoid, and it's hooked up to that. Uh, the earth side of the engine, the two wires, there's a wire coming out from inside. Oh yeah, pretty dark. Well, there we go. There's a wire coming out from inside. This one goes down and it's hooked in the off position 
between here and that one at the back which goes down to the earth now that's actually still earth in the on position can't figure out why I think it's because even if you take this off or oh, the connection on the other side is connected to the motor and the motor being metal comes you know the connections all the way around to the solenoid everything being metal it's constantly earthed so test run is going to we're going to see whether that matters or not it shouldn't do if it does then we'll simply have to disconnect that and let it hang and only earth it when we want to shut off although if we go look at the other parts of the electrics the power comes down to this side of the solenoid then it comes up and it's between these two this one and this one and in the on position sorry that one and that one are the start so in the start position that kicks that the solenoid makes the connection inside starts up in the on position we have power between this one at the back and this one oh, sorry this one at the back and this one here which opens sends power to the two cables down here sorry sends power to the one grey cable down here the one grey cable down here this other one is simply an earth earthed to the frame there uh, but power in the on position sends power to there which opens up the something inside here which pumps fuel allows fuel through if we turn it on slowly we can hear it open there we go on off on off yep on off on off so that's that pump it with fuel start up see if it runs okay so test let me see now. the technique for how deep the oil is now okay. have a little program for that oh, yeah, yeah. there's always a program Oh, it's not bad. Do you see where it came to? Be oh. nervous. Is that on recording? Yeah. Hold on, hold on. It's the pressure of the moment. Okay. Yeah, it's Tense. There you go. Intensity. Tank intensity. Fuel. We have a full tank of fuel. Oh, Are you nervous, Will? What are your feelings? feelings? How do you feel right now? Well, I just spoke to my mum. Oh, good. Okay. Just come off my period. <laughs> so <laughs> dandy. Okay, well, Toss, what are you doing here? Is this so we're about to turn the switch for a historical moment. What is this? It's a um, 17 horsepower engine. Also known as a power cube. Also known as a power cube with battery. Mm -hmm. And the fuel in this pipe, in these pipes. Okay, we ready? Okay, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we need some more gas. Sorry. <laughs> now the choke's outside. Hold on. I don't know which way it's throttled. Have I got the throttle? Okay, that's a choke right there. Yeah, okay, choke. Ready? Choke is ready. Still filming? Yeah, we're still filming. <laughs>
Congratulations, Will. <laughs> there we go. You're saving the world with one power cube at a time. One power cube at a time. Good moment here. So the power cube works. How many minutes did it take to put it together if you have all the parts? Uh, if the frame's welded up, and the, um, it took like 16 minutes to throw it in, mm -hmm. as you can see in the, took 16 minutes to throw it in, as you can see in the, in the other video, we documented that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. okay. Wow, that, uh, so that looks like steam in exhaust there. I guess it's going to burn off all the, all the powder, right? All the powder coatings. Sure, it's not toxic at all. So, well, we're still standing. I'm just gonna follow you around all day, Will. <laughs> so let's move to. You. Is this awkward? So it's not like we got it all <laughs> oh, good. Cool. Oh, okay. No leaks. So we get in the shower. Cut that bit. Um. Yeah. No, it seems to be good, right? I mean, we can yeah. leave it out. We can leave it out now and come and back. See if we check it later. See if there's any leaks. Mm -hmm. But all in all, and so we know. Going. Wow, it's quieter than the other one, right? Yeah, but it is new. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. sure after like thousands.